Okay, so today we're gonna use one of the coolest features I think that Vetrix software has. It's called the image trace feature. And it'll allow you to take an image, black and white or color, uh, from anywhere, such as Google Images or anything you might have that, that's applicable. And you can use this functionality to create a uh, vector border around it so that you can assign a toolpath to it. Now in this case, today we're gonna be taking the US Marine Corps logo and I found one, I did a search on Google, and this is the logo that I want. So I, I right clicked on it and I saved the image to my computer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and create a new file. We're gonna assign the file, uh, the work area 10 by 10 inches, which is a little bit bigger than I want the finished piece, but that's the work area that I'm gonna be working with. We're gonna use MDF, so we're gonna assign it to three quarter inch uh, MDF is what we're gonna use here, and we're gonna set the Z0 to the top. Now, if you were using material that's kind of uh, not uniform on the top, you could set the Z0 to the bed, and that, that way there it'll know that, that that's a zero reference point, and it won't matter if the top is, is uneven. Uh, in this case, MDF is pretty flat material, and I know the thickness is exactly three quarters of an inch, so I'm going to set it to the top. Now, as far as the XY's datum position, the, the machine doesn't know what kind of material, what size it is, or, or anything like that. You have to tell it. You have to assign it a starting position. So we've already done that with the Z. We told it that we're going to start with Z0 is going to be at the top of the work material, and we are going to set the Z the XY datum position to the lower left corner. Now we can also set it to the center or the upper right corner, but I like to use the lower left corner uh, for jobs like this. It just seems, seems simpler for me. Uh, we're gonna choose inches and that's it. So now this is our work area. And what we need to do is bring that bitmap image in that we just saved from Google. So we're gonna click on this little icon up here with the bird uh, in the folder. And we're gonna select the logo that we just downloaded from Google Images. So here it is. Uh, now all we need to do at this point is to click on this little bird icon, trace bitmap, and a box is gonna appear on the side here and we're gonna select that this is a black and white image but you could also select color. Uh, we're gonna leave the threshold in the middle because it's really just black and white so we don't need to uh, favor the higher or the minimum or maximum uh, number of colors uh, seeing it's only really one. Um, we're going to leave the default noise, fill, uh, corner fit, and fading, and we're going to hit preview. Then you can see now it's drawn a line around all the images, uh, or each letter and the, and the, um, the actual uh, logo here. So we're going to zoom in. We're going to take a look at it. I, I just want to see what is it, you know, what does it look like? Um, are the edges pretty smooth? Uh, you know, because that's where your tool path is going to be. And for the most part, this looks pretty good. Now we could try playing with the some of the uh, settings here and then click preview and see if there's any changes but on this particular job it, it really doesn't none of these really make a difference uh, it's a pretty basic black and white image so we're just gonna leave that and we're gonna click apply and then we're gonna close this so now we've got the US Marine Corps logo here and we have a, a toolpath around it. Now I don't need to see the gray anymore for the logo because I already have what I want. I, I have the outlines. So I'm going to uh, click on the layer tab and the bitmap layer here. We're just gonna click the light bulb and that's gonna turn the layer off. And we're gonna click okay. So now what we have is a, uh, a, a vector uh, bitmap. And you can see if I click the letters, they're all closed. And if I click the outline here, that's uh, that's one outline. Each of these is an inner outline, which is perfect. Now, if you were to click on, say, the M, and you didn't see this purple line all the way around, that means you probably have an open vector somewhere. And all you need to do is just select it, and then go down here to this, and it says Join Open Vectors. And right now it's grayed out because it's a closed vector. Uh, but you could set your tolerance to uh, say 0.1 inches and if you could change the tolerance settings to see uh, if this ungrays but right now this is perfect so it's not going to but you can use this join vector feature if you need to to close a vector that was made from the bitmap trace so now the only other thing I want to do 
is this this is the logo I want. So now I want to have a rounded rectangle uh, around the, the outside of this. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. And basically what I want for a finished size is 8.5 inches by 9. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I want a radius external uh, corner, which you'll see here. And I, I just want to use a quarter of an inch as my radius. And I click apply. And you can see now over here that the, the corners have all uh, been made into a radius. So uh, we're going to click close. And now what we need to do is we need to take this border. I want to move it up because I, I don't like how it's so close to the uh, U.S. Marine Corps letters there. So there we go. So now we've got this exactly the way I want it. And I am going to, I'm all set now to make a toolpath. So we're going to pin this up here. I want to keep that side pin. We're going to click the toolpath uh, box here so we can get the toolpath layouts. And for some reason this didn't pin, I'm going to pin it again. There we go. So now we got the drawing tab over here and we have the toolpaths over here. So I'm going to center this up a little bit. And when you're working in any toolpath, you always want to start from the center of the object out. Uh, I wouldn't want to cut out this perimeter first because I still have all this cutting to do inside here. Now, in this particular uh, job, all I'm going to do, this is going to be, a, I'm just going to pocket out the letters and I'm going to pocket out the bulk of the logo here. And I'm going to leave the inside of the arrows here here and this uh, North and South America um, part is those are going to be uncut. So we're only going to cut out the letters and the outside perimeter here. So basically to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to hold the shift key and we're going to select each of the letters and we're going to select the outside perimeter of the logo itself. And we're going to select this little dot. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click uh, pocket tool path because we're going to remove the material in in between the lines we're not going to uh, cut around them we, we want to remove the material that that's in between them so uh, pocket tool path our start depth is going to be zero which is the top of the surface that's where we set our z zero to we are going to cut this down uh, I want to go a little bit more than an eighth of an inch uh, let's go point two so we're not quite a quarter of an inch now what we're going to do at the end is we're going to everything we cut out we're going to it's going to be uh, painted black and then the surface will eventually be painted a different color but the letters and the cutouts are going to be black so to do this now we've got some pretty tight inside corners and you got to understand that the the thicker the end mill, the bigger the diameter of the end mill you use, the the harder it's going to be to get into uh, tight corners. Uh, you know, and we've got to be concerned about areas like this right here. Uh, we have to be concerned about areas like around the arrow here. Uh, we want to make sure that, that that cleans out. And if you're not careful and you use too big of a bit, you won't get any detail in there. So... We're going to experiment here a little bit and see what is going to be best for our needs. Now, we're going to start off with a quarter inch end mill, which I, I can tell you right now is going to be too too big for this. But So we're going to do a quarter inch. We're going to, a standard pass depth is half of the diameter of the bit. Uh, the step over in this case, think of it like mowing a lawn where you overlap the previous um, row that you do. In this case, a, a pretty, pretty, uh, constant thing that we use is uh, 40%. Uh, that means we're going to overlap 40% of this bit over the previous one. It gives you a nice clean bottom finish and uh, it just seems to be work the best just in the testing that we've done. You could play with this. You could do 50, 60, 70%. Um, to go lower than that, you're just really wasting time. Uh, the only time you would go lower than that is if you were using like a really fine detail bit and you were doing like a carving job, then you might do 10%. Um, in this case, if you're using an HF 500 spindle, you can set your RPMs here uh, for MDF. I like 15,000 RPM. The maximum speed for a Stepcraft machine is 50 millimeters per second. So if we leave this at 50, we're running at full speed. What I usually like to do is set this for half. 
And the reason I like to do that is because UCCNC has the ability to vary the speed on the fly. And you can go from zero all the way up to 200%. So when it's at 100%, you're running at 25 millimeters per second. But if you go to 200%, you're essentially at 50 millimeters a second. So you can start in the middle and then play with it as it's running and see maybe, you know, depending on the type of end mill you're using and the material you're using, you could probably get a lot more speed out of it before you start to hear things kind of strain a little bit. So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, for plunge rate, we're going to set that to 10 and that's basically talking about how fast the bit moves down into the material. So the harder the material, the slower you want to set this. You don't, you wouldn't want to, if you were doing aluminum, you wouldn't want to plow this in at uh, 10 millimeters a second. But because this is MDF, it's not going to be a problem. So we're going to click OK. And you'll see here that because we, we're going down 0.2 inches, uh, we set the, the pass depth at uh, eighth of an inch. So it's going to have to do two passes in order to make that cut, uh, which is fine. As far as clearing, when you're doing pocketing, you have two options. You have offsetting, which basically makes a circular pattern to remove the material and you have a raster pattern which is back and forth like like mowing a lawn in this case we're going to do a raster pattern we're going to leave it at climb climb and conventional just to, talks about the direction that the tool is moving as it's cutting so uh in this case conventional is counterclockwise where climb is clockwise you could choose a raster angle and that would be the angle to which the bit is moving back and forth as it's clearing out the material so in this case, we're going to leave it at zero, which essentially is going to go back and forth uh, parallel with the X axis and remove everything out. Some shapes, uh, you you know, if it was a big square area, you may want to go 45 degrees and it, it clears it at an angle. Um, you're able to pick a profile pass and on a profile pass, you can either do no profile pass. You can do that the profile pass first or last. So basically what happens is as the bit reaches the edge of the line, it moves over and then goes back. Well, in what you'll end up with is tiny little bumps on the inside of the line because the bit's round and not square. So by a profile pass, we'll run the bit all the way around the inside perimeter of that line before it goes on to the next step. I usually like to do the profile pass last. I get a, I, I like the way the finish is. It, it does what uh, the job and then it goes back around and it cleans it up and you have a nice sharp inch inside edge. So you can choose to ramp plunge. And basically what that means is instead of the bit going straight down in the material, you can choose to ramp it into the material at an angle over a certain distance. So in this case, we're going to do ramp plunge at a half an inch. So what that means is that if I tell it I want the bit to go down an eighth of an inch, it's going to come in at an angle and it's going to take a half an inch to dive into the material um, an eighth of an inch deep. So that's that's what that means. And the harder the materials you have, the longer you want the distance to be on a ramp plunge because you got to think about it. The end mill is square on the bottom. So it's not really meant to be a drill to go straight down. So it's meant to cut sideways. And because of that, by ramping in as you're going down, you're taking advantage of the cutter on the actual tool. And it's less strain on the tool, less strain on the machine. Now, that's it, basically. Everything's done there. You could name this. If you were going to have a lot of different tool paths, you might want to name this one. Uh, you know, uh, inside pocket one or something, but they, they already defaulted to pocket one. So we're going to click calculate and we're going to click preview all tool pass. Now this looks okay. You got kind of a, you know, you're missing some detail there, but the letters don't look good at all. And again, that's because we're using a quarter of an inch tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. We're going to select an eighth of an inch tool this time. And you could see it's an eighth of an inch. It's set down to a sixteenth of an inch uh, depth per pass, which is half the diameter. We're going to set this to 15,000. Uh, we already have 25 for the speed, and we're going to set this to 10, and we're going to click OK. Uh, we're going to leave everything else the same. Uh, in order to get down to two tenths, this is going to need four passes because we did set it to sixteenth of an inch per pass. Uh, we are The ramp plunge is set, and we're just going to click Calculate again. Now this time here, it's going to, you're going to have a little bit more detail and uh, we're going to reset the preview and then preview all tool pass. Now 
you can see the letters look better. Uh, this has more detail. You could start to see the little ribbon here that was over over the bird's head. You could, you could start to see that, uh, but it's still not perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here. We are going to change this now to a sixteenth of an inch bit. And in this case, uh, we have a sixteenth of an inch end mill. I don't know why this is at 0.129, but we're going to leave this set in this case for a sixteenth of an inch um, because I know that the sixteenth of an inch bit will cut fine at a sixteenth of an inch depth per pass on, um, on MDF. So we already have the 15,000 RPM. We're going to set this to 25 and again set this to 10. So they're all the same as far as feed and speed and RPM. The only thing that's going to vary is the diameter. We're going to click OK. Everything else remains the same. It's still at four passes. We're going to come down here to calculate. Now we're going to reset the preview again and we're going to update all tool. We're going to preview all tool paths again. Now this time we got what we want. Now we've got the logo looks really good. The letters look good. We've got the ribbon of right here, which looks good. We got the little dot. Uh, you could see that. You could see the lines uh, here. Everything looks looks really nice. So we're happy with that. We're going to leave that pocket alone. Now we're going to come back and one thing we didn't see here, if you look at the preview tool path, is we didn't have the North and South America and we didn't have the inner parts of the arrows. Now, that's a pretty common mistake that you click the outside and you're pocketing. Now, what's actually happening is because I said that I want to pocket the outside edges, again, the machine doesn't know that there's something in between. So what it's doing is it's pocketing everything and you're losing this detail. It's essentially cleaning it out. So we're going to do this one last time. We're going to double click on pocket toolpath. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold the shift key down and we're going to select everything. And so now we're going to go back here and we're everything's going to be the same 16th of an inch. And we're going to click calculate. Now this time when we reset the preview and preview all tool pass, you'll see you have the letters up here. You'll see here's the North and South America, which did not cut, which is what we wanted. Here's the outside uh, the inside of the arrows which didn't cut but the hole did cut that's exactly what we were looking for so this is a pretty pretty simple uh, showing where you can turn a bitmap image into into a tool path here now the last thing we want to do is we want to go back we want to select the outside edge and we are going to choose a profile tool path now we have a 16th of an inch end mill already in there, but I know that the 16th inch end mills we have do not cut three quarters of an inch deep. So we're going to have to change tools here to do the out outline cutout. Now, in this case, we're going to start at zero top of the material and we are going to cut down to we're going to go instead of 0.75, we're going to go 0.65 because we have a spoil board underneath the material so we don't cut into the table. But we, you do want to cut a little deeper than the bottom of the material so we have a nice clean back on the material. So we're going to leave that at 0 0.765. And we're going to choose our, our quarter inch end mill that we had set up before. Uh, we're going to use that as our cutout end mill. Uh, the, the cutter that I have actually has an inch worth of cutting space between the bottom and, and where the shaft is, so which is perfect for cutting three quarter inch MDF. So we're going to click OK. And you could see because it's set for an eighth of an inch, we've got seven passes that it's going to take. And again, as you're running the job, you may find for different cutters that you can run a deeper pass. You could go a quarter inch or maybe even a little bit more, or you can run it faster than 25 millimeters. You can maybe go 40 or 50. Uh, it just depends on the cutter. It depends on the spindle. It depends on the material you're using. It is a little uh, kind of learn as you go. But the cool thing is once you know, you can go back in, in here and you can resave this end mill with you could copy it and resave it as MDF. So now that end mill is set up in here all the time for MDF. And every time you want to cut out something using a quarter inch end mill for MDF, you would just select that and all the settings would automatically be set to what you found is optimal for your machine. So we're going to cut along the outside. We're going to leave it on climb. Uh, we the last pass we don't care about. Uh, vector start points we don't need to optimize for that in this case uh, we could set, we're going to set tabs 
on this just because as as we're cutting around the perimeter of this when the cutter finally breaks through and makes the last cut we don't want the plaque uh kind of left loose in there where it can slam into the cutter before the cutter has a time to come out of the material so we're going to make a couple uh really small tabs that will remain in place and we can just cut them off with a razor blade or, or a razor saw uh, or a little bit later, even a pair of cutters and then sand it off. So we're going to click add tabs to toolpath. We're going to make the tabs a uh, half inch long and a sixteenth of an inch tall. And we're going to click edit tabs. And now what's going to happen is the machine, the software is going to let us pick where we want the tabs. So we're just going to put four on here. We're going to put one on each side. It doesn't really matter where I'm trying to guess the centers and that's it now we're going to click uh, close and we're going to go down here to calculate it's going to warn us that our material is set to three quarters of an inch but we're going to cut 0.765 so it wants to make sure that we have some sort of spoil board under there so we don't cut into the bed of the machine which we will so we're going to click ok and so now we're going to preview the visible toolpath because that's the one we already we already previewed the other one. So we're just going to preview the visible toolpath. And you can see it, it went down all the way through. Now you can see the tabs here on uh, on this material. You see them right here. And if you flip it over, you can see the tabs. There's one right here. And you can see it's it's not very thick. It's it's a sixteenth of an inch thick, just like we set it to. So you just cut it off afterwards when it's done. But the nice thing about it is there's four tabs on there that keep this plaque uh, attached to the workpiece, which would be clamped to the table. So this doesn't break loose when it comes all the way down. Now, if you want to look at uh, what the what it would look like colored in, what we can do here is we can do a global fill color. So if you click on global fill color, say we want to make the letters and everything that we've cut out, we want to make it black later. This gives you a chance to see what this is going to look like once it's painted. Now, it's it's a pretty cool feature, especially if you're making something for a customer, because now what you can do here is you could save the preview image and you can send that off to your customer to get their approval on it. Yeah, I like the way it looks. No, I don't. You can choose the material uh, if you're going to do it out of dark wood, uh, dark oak. Uh, you've got a lot of different settings in here, whether you're going to use walnut. And uh, you can even choose metals, stones. Uh, they have plastics in here. So, you know, it, it gives you a, you can also choose a solid color if you want. Uh, so it, it's nice. In, in this case, we could choose MDF, which is what we're using. And that's that's what this is going to look like. So you can send that out to your customer, get an approval before you even get to your CNC machine. It saves you time, saves you money, and uh, gives you a chance to change things out if you want. Now, in a future video, we're going to show this same logo, the same plaque being done, but we're going to do it in V-Carve. And the reason for that is I, I want to show you what a V-Carving toolpath looks like and how instead of square letters and square cuts that you have everywhere here, how we can get this to V carve and it'll give you uh, beveled edges and it just has a completely different effect to it. Uh, but you, you know, this feature is built into all versions of cut 2d and V carve the, the uh, bitmap trace feature. And you can see how easy it was. I didn't have to draw this. I, I didn't have to do anything to it. All I had to do was bring it in, run an image trace and select the outlines for toolpaths. So you got to love, uh, love that feature on their program. Now the last thing I got to do here is I have to save the toolpaths uh, files so that I can bring them over to UCC and C and cut them out on my stepcraft. Now, if you were using the same bit for both toolpaths, then you could save them both in one file. Now I'm going to select both and I'm going to click save and it's going to give me an error here. The visible toolpaths use different tools and the selected post processor does not support a tool changer. So we in this case we can't do that because we used a quarter of an inch to cut out the outside and we use a sixteenth of an inch for the middle so we're gonna have to save each file independently so we're gonna click on the pocket one and we are gonna save the toolpath you wanna make sure you're using a Mach 2 slash 3 arcs millimeter post processor for any stepcraft machine that's using UC CNC uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this as uh, let's see uh, 0625 pocket 
and that's just basically telling me I need a sixteenth of an inch tool to, to do this job. And then we're going to click on the profile and we're going to save that one. And this one we're going to do a 2.5 profile. So now I have both files saved. I'll take those over to the StepCraft machine. I'll load them into UCCNC, mount my material, and we'll go ahead and cut this plaque out in the next video.